So the second chunk of this section deals with finding the greatest common factor. Mathematicians are always super lazy, so if we can say some acronym, GCF, so I don't have to babble out those three words, um, we're usually going to. So get used to hearing those acronyms, GCF and LCM. So greatest common factor, what is it? The largest factor that's common between some numbers. So there's a lot of different ways we can solve for these. I think the most basic and kind of uh, solid in our mind is to write out all the factors and just visually see, okay, what is the largest one that they share in common? But it can be time consuming if we have large numbers. But let's just start with some small numbers, 20 and 30. What is their greatest common factor that they share between them? So first of all, we want to start off and write all of the factors of 20, all of the factors of 30. Then we'll visualize and see which one is the greatest common between them. So what are my factors of 20? Always 1. It's always divisible by that. It's even, so it's divisible by 2. 3 it's not, but 4 is also a factor. 5. 10 and itself, 20. Those are all the possible factors of 20. What about 30? Some of the same, it's always divisible by 1. 2, 3, not 4, but 5, 6. What else? 10, 15, and itself, 30. So we have all of the possible factors of each. And we can see which ones do they share in common. So everything is going to share one in common. It's the most boring basic case. Anything divided by one is just itself, so everything is divisible by one. They also share two. And what else? Five and ten. So the greatest of the common factors is called the greatest common factor. And what is the GCF between 20 and 30? So what is the greatest factor that they share in common? 10. It's the largest factor that each of them have. All right, so now, question. What is the greatest common factor of 180 and 375? Ugh. I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to write out all the different factors. So we need another way. Yes, this will work. It'll get us there. But again, if we have large numbers, it's going to be really time consuming. So there's a faster method to finding the greatest common factor on the next page. So how do I want to break this up? We can look at 20 and break it up into its prime factorization. We can do the same for 30. So off on the side, how do I want to break up 20? What are some options? And you can do it as well. I'm going to go with 4 and 5. 5 is prime, and I need to break up 4 into 2 and 2. So 20 can be written as 2 times 2 times 5. It's prime factorization. And do the same for 30. I'm going to go 3 and 10. 3 is prime. 10 can be broken up into 2 and 5. So it's prime factorization. It's 2 times 3 times 5. So once you have your prime factorization and you have your factors lined up, just draw lines between um, through the ones that they share in common. So for example, if I'm starting to build greatest common factor between these two, we know what it's going to be, but let's use this new method. So they share a common factor of 2, so that has to be taken into account in my greatest common factor. And what else do they share in common? A factor of 5. So I need to take one of those as well. Do they each share a factor of 3? Nope, that one doesn't have it. Do they share another factor of 2? Ah, 30 doesn't have another factor of 2. So the greatest common factor that 20 and 30 share is 10, which is the same thing we got when we wrote out all the factors and visualized what was going on. So. Breaking up into those factor trees, those prime factorizations, it's going to save us some time and some headache writing out all of the factors. 
So looking at that next example, find the GCF, greatest common factor, of 54, 90, and 252. We're going to take some bigger numbers and see what we come up with. So again, we want to break these up into the primes. Because I don't want to have to write out individual factors for all of these. Pain in the butt. So let's just start with 54. How do you want to break it up in the beginning? I like... 9 and 6, so you could choose whatever you want, factor of 2. It'll take you a little bit to get there. But are either of those prime? No, so we need to go farther. 9 is 3 and 3. Each of those are prime, so I'm done there. My other branch of the tree, 6 is also not prime. It can break up into 2 and 3, and each of those are prime. So we broke down 54 as far as we can go. Let's take a whack at 90. How do you want to start him? I like 9 and 10. Maybe you picked some other ones. And again, neither one of those are prime. So we need to break it down until we get the primes. How can I break up 10? 2 and 5. Each of those are prime. We're all done. Everything on the bottom of the tree is prime. And 252. A little bit bigger. I'm going to pick 9 and 28. But again, you could start with whatever you want. And each of those are not prime. They are still composite. We can break them down farther. So, we know how 9 breaks down. We've done that a bunch now. 3 and 3. Each of those are prime. And what about 28? Again, we have a lot of different options. I'm going to pick 7 and 4. 7 is prime. 4 can keep going until we get our primes. Move from one marker to another loser. Come on, yellow, don't steer me wrong. Let's see. Oh, there we go. A little better. All right, so we have all the prime factorizations of these numbers. Let's write them out in a nice order. So 54, starting with the smallest factor, is two. And I had three factors of three. And 90 was next. How did we break him up? 2, 3, 3, and 5. And lastly, 252. Smallest factor was 2. We had 2 of those. Next was 3. Last was 7. Broke it up into its prime factorization. So, let's start building that greatest common factor. What do they share in common? So again, they're all lines through what's common. They all share a factor of 2, so I'm going to have to take that into account. What else? I've got a 3, 3, and another 3. So they share that in common. Anything else they share in common? Another factor of 3. I've got one here, one there, one there. Anything else that we're missing? We just got oddballs left over, none that are shared between all three of them. So our greatest common factor is going to be 9 times 2, 18. So that's the largest factor that's shared common between these three numbers. And we could even find the greatest common factor between a whole bunch of numbers. But generally we stick to like 2 or 3. So, 2 for you to try. First, find that greatest common factor between 40 and 100. Then find the greatest common factor between 3, 5, and 22. So how did you break down 40? How did you start it off? Lots of different options. I'm going to say 4 and 10. I like those. Neither which are prime, so we got to keep breaking it down. 4 and 2 and 2, those are prime. 10 breaks into what? 2 and 5. Both of those are prime. So I've got 40. I've got its prime factorization. And how did you think to break up 100? How did you start that one off? 2 and 50 if you wanted. I'm going to say 4 and 25. Okay. So, not prime. Got to break them down farther. 2 and 2. Each of those are prime. 25 breaks into 
5 times 5. So even if you started with other numbers, we got the same prime factorization. So again, we're writing them in increasing order. Smallest factor was 2. I had two of those. And two factors of 5. So what did you get for the greatest common factor? What did they share in common? H had a 2, had another 2, and what else? Another 5. So, greatest common factor between 40 and 10 is 20. All right. And what happened in your second case? How can I break 3 up? 3 is prime, so it's only divisible by itself, and 1 is what we can break it up into. 5 is also prime, so it can only be broken up into 5 and 1. And 22, we can only break up into 2 and 11, both of which are prime. So what is the greatest common factor between these guys? What is the factor that they all share in common? We don't usually write it when we write the prime factorizations, but it's unspoken. 1. I can take 3, break it up into 3 and 1. Mm -hmm. 5, 1 and 5, and I can multiply by another factor of 1. It's not going to change anything. So they all share that in common. So sometimes, greatest common factor is only 1. It's a little funny, but it's legit.